Hey, mic's working? Great. Thank you for coming. Great to be here, and thanks for the for the warm intro. En al groeit, by the way, but that's... Uh, I know it's a difficult uh, word if you're not Dutch. Are there any non-Dutch speakers in the audience? Awesome. Great. Where, where did you guys uh, all come from uh, today? Like, from any place uh, really far, or... Just throw, throw some names, locations. Uh, Dimbos. Dimbos? Great. Hi. Oeschees, yeah, great. Our, our, we, we had that hometown in common. Really funny to, uh, to, to see that happening. Okay, so there's, there's 19 more minutes on the clock, and um, uh, I want to talk to you today about, uh, about startups, and more specifically about the three questions you should, you should ask yourself to, uh, to become a startup success. Is that me, or? Um, so, so like uh, was said in the introduction, I've been uh, I've been working inside startups now since um, 2011, and um, I think I have a, a bit of an understanding of what it takes to become a, a startup success. Um, like, um, well, bef before before I get to the questions, I will uh, shortly introduce myself, and then uh, by the end of the talk, uh, hopefully we have some uh, some time for Q and. My, uh, my career at Heineken, but uh, when it starts to get really interesting is when I uh, joined this company. It's called Rockstart. Does anyone of you have ever heard about it? Rockstart, so not Rockstar, the energy drink. I see uh, plenty of people uh, shaking their heads. So um, um, Rockstart is a company that invests in startups. Um, specifically at the time it was tech startups and um, we were based in Amsterdam and recruited startups from all over the world to come to Amsterdam and join our program, where we would invest some money, uh, mentorship by successful entrepreneurs, and by the end of the 100-day program, uh, there will be a demo day. So they would uh, be on a stage a couple of times bigger than this, the audience packed with investors, and they would pitch their, their startup and, and their, basically their, 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 their request for funding, if you will. So I joined this company as the uh, first employee. I worked there for four years. And uh, the most uh, successful company that was incubated at Rockstar is called Hubs, actually not 3D Hubs, but Hubs. And it was sold two years ago for 250 million euros. And I'm pretty proud to, to be, have a little, little bit of a, well, have contributed to their, to their success, if you will. Um, that was a, a really fun ride. And afterwards, I joined this company. I'm, I'm pretty sure no one has ever heard about it, but uh, it's Travis, it's a handheld, translation device. And what was interesting about this company is that they, they or we, we went from having nothing, just having an idea, not a prototype, to over 10 million in, in revenue within two years. So that was an extremely interesting ride, having nothing at, at one point, and then soon after having all sorts of uh, customers, uh, media relations, including a shitstorm on social media because the device didn't work. So we were working around the clock to manage that. It was an interesting ride, and uh, I, I learned a lot there. And uh, the, the last part I will uh, talk to you about in this introduction is when I joined Etergo. Has anyone of you have ever heard about Etergo, the app scooter? OK. So we positioned it as the, the Tesla of the scooters. So it's, uh, it's an electric scooter. Uh, it was founded in 2015, and I worked in the investor relations department. So I was pretty much all day long talking to investors, trying to get them to, to invest in this company. The company was sold to, uh, let's say, the Uber of India. It's called Ola. And today they produce about 1,000 units per day in a mega factory in India. Uh, I decided to leave the company after it was acquired by the, by the Indian company. Um, but Again, I learned a lot, and I hope to bring some of that, uh, some of the experience to you uh, today. So, when I was preparing for this talk, it was King's Day, and as you know, it's a big day in in the Netherlands. And at some point, I saw this picture, uh, well, ending up in my uh, in my LinkedIn feed. Is anyone from Amsterdam here? And you know, obviously, you know, Café de Bluffende Vis. It's a well-known. Amsterdam bar, uh, they have a mural like this every year for King's Day, and uh, it struck me. Um, 
for, for several reasons, for which, which I talk about shortly. Uh, who does not know who the girl is? Which is fine, by the way. She's the crown princess. Amalia, I believe the her official name is Katharina Amalia, of course, needs to have a royal name. But Amalia, um, she's, well, she's there and she's holding a, a bike. Um, it's a swap feeds. Who does not know what a swap feeds is? Swap. Um, but I found it striking and um, I, I just kept wondering what, why is she holding a, a swap feeds and not some sort of other, you know, other type of uh, bicycle, and I thought uh, it made sense to make that the, the topic of my talk today, because I wanted to know and I wanted to analyze why she was holding that bike and not a, not a different type of bike. Um, and to go short, I will explain later why is she holding a swap feet. It's because um, it's an idea whose time has come. So let's deconstruct that, right? A an idea whose time has come, because that essentially is um, when you have startup success, right? It's an idea whose time has come. So let's do a little bit of an analysis. Swap Feeds, it's, uh, it's a company that was founded in the Netherlands in 2016. It's a bicycle subscription service. And it's well known uh, because of the distinctive blue front wheel. Um, it has a subscription plan including maintenance and repairs and it aims to provide a convenient and hassle-free cycling experience for its subscribers. Maybe some of you use the service, right? A anyone? Any hands? Okay, so I'm from the, uh, a small town near Utrecht and yesterday I, I drove across the Utrecht uh, University campus and I think within three or four minutes I saw like 20 of them. So it's an idea whose time has come. Um, and essentially, in my own words, uh, what is swap feeds? It's a bike that always works. So let's look at the, the customer of, of swap feeds, at least the, the largest profile, if you will, uh, that was uh, uh, defined by the company. Um, well, in this case, uh, well, the guy in the picture, he's a Dutch student. So who's the customer? Uh, it's, it, it's a young person who is mobile, who wants to travel around, and is most likely to live in an urban area. Um, Let's call it a she now, for now. So she wants convenience and hassle-free experience. And she expects to fix everything, or at least manage everything uh, with her mobile phone, right? Order anything with a, with a, with a click, manage your, your insurance, uh, talk to your mom, uh, well, <laughs> you know what it's like. And um, this audience is used to a, a subscription model, right? Netflix, Spotify, you name it, it's all there. So if we take that customer need, right? Wanting convenience is used to subscriptions, expects to fix everything from a mobile phone. And when you compare that to the old situation, so pre-swap feeds, especially if you're from the Netherlands, you are very well known with the old situation, which is that you would buy a bicycle at a store like this. It's what I call a mom and pop store. Um, and when you have a flat tire, you fix it yourself or you go to the bicycle store where you need to wait until your bike is fixed, which is most often not happening in the next five minutes, but uh, in the next couple of hours or in the next couple of days. So you're there without a bicycle and this keeps on repeating, repeating, because uh, every now and then you're, you have a flat tire or you're even worse, your bike gets stolen. It's what, what happened to me when I studied in Amsterdam it happened a couple of times. So what was going on? There was a clear disconnect between uh, demand and supply. It's, it's as easy as that. Um, so basically what Swapfeeds did as a company, they said, somewhere along these lines, uh, they said, well, so what's out there today, the mom and pop store for bicycles, it cannot get you what you need. Um, referring back to the, to the needs of the audience, right? Uh, and they were the first company to make this claim, at least in the Netherlands. They were out there being bold about this, and they were the first to have a solution for this. And what happened, of course, after doing research and doing tests and all that, you can say that the world, or at least uh, the audience in the Netherlands, their target audience, they agreed with that statement and they, they wanted that service. And, and this is not to be underestimated, they delivered. So I've been part of a couple of startups made bold claims and they weren't able to deliver. Uh, it's, I think it's the most important part of, 
of, uh, of a startup, they delivered, they delivered the actual working product. All right, now getting to, uh, to the three questions, which is uh, my promise, at least for today in this talk. So the first question is, what customer need is my competition not meeting that I can meet successfully? So in the case of uh, swap feeds is that it's a convenient and hassle-free cycling experience. So uh, what they did is that they, they created a mobile app and basically said, look, if, you're, if your bike is, is broken or it's, we come to you instead of you come to us, it's convenient and we deliver you a bike that always works. So what customer is my com competition not meeting that I can meet successfully? Well, it's this. Next question, what surprising features does my product or service have? I see a couple of you making photos. There's a slide in the end with all, with all the questions in there. <laughs> so I, I, I oftentimes sit in audiences like this. So I thought, OK, I'm putting, putting them in one slide. So what surprising features does my product or service have? Surprising, something that you do not expect. Well. It's, a, it's a, uh, the subscription plan. And today, it's, it's really common to have su subscription plans, but when swap feeds introduced, there was nothing like it. So therefore, it was surprising, including maintenance and repairs. How convenient is that? It's pretty surprising, and that's why everybody wants it, or at least the target audience wants it. And then third, what makes people easily talk about my product or service to other people? In other words, what's the word of mouth effect? Because as we all know, or at least I've come to understand, is that there's no such thing as word of, more, uh, word of mouth marketing, right? It's free, it's strong, people want to buy what their friends buy, etc. So what's the factor? It's the, one of the things, it's a distinctive blue front tire. I, 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 I can't just stop talking about the magic of that. It's so simple, but it's so strong. And they, they keep on using it. And, of course, the easy usage. The easy usage of the app, the fact that it's really easy. If you, if, if you need a repair, they come and fix it. Everything is centered around, well, ease of use, if you will. I see I have some time left, so uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, another startup, which is, uh, well, far beyond startup stage now. Um, is anyone familiar with Headspace? I see a couple of hands, plenty of hands remain like this. So Headspace, uh, that means that not all of you know it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a frequent user of it. Um, so it's an app founded by a British monk. I believe his name is Andy Puddicombe, uh, released in 2010, so a while ago. Super popular. I don't know the exact amount, but it's in the millions of, of users. And it offers guided meditation and mindfulness exercises. And it helps users manage stress, improve focus, and sleep better. By the way, fun fact, I used ChatGPT to come up with these uh, <laughs> words because it just saved time. Uh, and it, it, it is what it is. Of course, I checked, I, I checked that, but uh, it is what it is. So it's, it's a meditation app, right? Um, a guided meditation where I wanted, when I wanted. When I'm in the Uzbekistan desert, where I used it, I can use it. When I'm in the train riding from Enschede to Amsterdam, I can use it anywhere, anytime, right? You, you get the idea. All right, so who's the customer of, uh, of Headspace? Um, I would say, I didn't fact check, but based on how I know the app and what, what I've read about the app is that it's, it's targeted towards ambitious people, regardless of age, but ambitious, so working, having a, a intense job, maybe, maybe a few companies, and who's tech savvy. So someone who's likely to use their mobile phone to, to get meditation, right? Also, just like Swap Feeds, Swap Feeds wants convenience and a hassle-free experience, also expects to fix everything with their mobile phone and is used to subscription model. So you, one could argue, hey, maybe a, a Swap, Fe Swap Feeds user is also a, a Headspace user. Um, so again, doing the same exercise as before, what do we have in terms of customer needs? Uh, wants convenience, used to subscription, expects to fix everything with a mobile phone. And so when you look at the pre-Headspace situation, uh, pre-2010, is that when you would want to have a meditation, you 
needed to go to find a, a yoga studio or uh, a, a mindfulness studio or, or what have you, where you go there and you take the class. You sit there while you travel towards the class, etc. You take the meditation class, you go home and you repeat. Oh, again, there was a clear disconnect between demand and supply. So what did they do? Again, they said, look, what's out there today can get you what you need. You want convenience, you don't want to travel towards the, uh, towards, uh, towards the studio. And again, they were the first to make this claim worldwide. Again, luckily for them, the world agreed with that statement and also they delivered. Really nice design, it works. Um, it's now both in the app and also on platforms like Netflix. So, you know, seamless experience. Question number one, what customer is my competition not meeting that I can meet successfully? Well, a guided meditation anytime, anywhere was not possible when you would go to studios, etc. You would need to go there when, when the class was there, not when you wanted it. What surprising features does my product or service have? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great meditation app. It's, I, I would say it's killer content and it's way cheaper than the in real life meditation. It's, just, it's, a, it's like 10, 10 euros a month or maybe 12, which is uh, way more uh, cheaper than uh, going to a yoga class. And then what makes people easily talk about my product or service to other people? Well, it's meditation for the masses, right? So I was referred to Headspace by a friend and he says, Look, you just just try it out, and um, it was there was such a low barrier for me to to enter. I just um, downloaded the app and 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 went for it, and that's why I'm still a user today. Um, three minutes left, so I would argue, uh, if you take these steps, it's not that you are guaranteed to have a success, but you at least increased your chances of becoming one where you would, one, define a disconnect between a demand and supply. I've seen hundreds of startups that would uh, reason from, we built this because it's possible, instead of uh, we have defined, we have validated a, a customer need, and we're going to build something that uh, meets that need. Second would be is to answer the three questions that I've uh, just told you. And thirdly, deliver on the promise, which is, the, uh, the hardest of the three. There's the slide where it's all there. Um, I have two minutes left, maybe some time for Q&A, and uh, it would be great if you want to know more about this. Um, you, can, uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. That's, that's my preferred platform. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe some time for a question. If there is one, we have this uh, the thing here, right? Is it, can I just throw it? <laughs> I can throw it in the audience if, uh, if there are any questions. Yeah, gentleman from Den Bosch. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so um, I do have a question. Uh, might not be relative to the subject, but it's more like uh, my uh, personal um, struggle. Yeah. So I have some ideas that I thought some people might use it in the good way, or, but might use it in the wrong way. Uh, so that's somehow that struggle me that should I put that into real reality or, yeah, what would be your answer? So it sounds like you're thinking about an idea that some people might use it to do harm to other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, the intention is for good, uh, for, for good usage. So uh, what, yeah, it's more like uh, some kind of struggle to me that uh, should I bring it into real or, uh, or would that be a Dutch way to think of things? A Dutch way to think about it? Uh, I, I, I'm or sure. you just go ahead, do it and no, see what happens? No, 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 no. I, think, I think it's a valid question. Uh, I, I, I need to know more about it. So maybe we can chat after. Uh, whew, you're putting me in the spot here. But uh, <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if I would need to answer that, I... It's kind of a, like an open door, but I would say, um, look, you can never prevent uh, people from doing harm with the product if, if they really want it right. But I would try to look for ways how to minimize the risk. Yeah, it's, it's not the answer that you were hoping for, but I, uh, I argue that it, it's a pretty tough question. Um, shall we agree on talking a bit further uh, after, uh, after, <laughs> after? Okay, cool.
Okay, thanks. <laughs> then I'm buying myself a little bit of time. <laughs> what do you think? Makes sense or is it complete BS? <laughs> My startup. Um, you mean the, the one that, w uh, the job maker? So uh, I came to this audience with my, uh, my first em employer, right? He's the founder of Rockstar. Why I got that job is because I, there was no vacancy. I showed up, I sent him an email. Look, I really like your plans. Uh, how can I uh, become involved? And he said, look, I'm building this on my own. I don't want any employees. I certainly don't want any interns. Um, well, but I'm willing to talk to you, have coffee. Long story short, um, I pitched myself and then that became an internship, that became a job. I did that for four times and over the years I've come to advise many of my friends and acquaintances because uh, I'm highly unsuccessful in applying for jobs and I'm highly successful in creating jobs for which there is no vacancy. So at some point I thought, well, if people see value in my services, why don't I create an online training about it with the goal uh, to open people's eyes and to see, at least in my perspective, when it comes to your career, you need to be the pilot, not the passenger. And uh, you can take charge by uh, having an open view, meet, talking to people, meeting people, um, uh, meeting interesting companies. And when you decide, look, I feel that this is a company for me, you have the opportunity to uh, create a job there. And uh, I would say 98% of the people that I usually talk to have never, never come across this idea. So I think it's really interesting. I think there's a market for it. There is, uh, um, now I only need to uh, create it. Yeah, deliver. The jobmaker.com, I have, uh, I, I, I've just bought it, so I'm now, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable talking about it. Yeah. Hi. Hey. So, um, in, the same, in the same regard, actually, to this uh, last question or explanation, um, I think there's certain basic things, like knowing how to shake hands, lock eyes, and be representable of yeah. yourself. Is there anything other than that that's quite standard when it comes to introducing yourself, knowing how to quote unquote mark, market yourself, or present yourself? Yeah. Like kind of tips that can help out in this domain. And maybe that's your training, so I don't no, know, maybe, no, this, I, maybe it's the open door. Give away my <laughs> training for free. <laughs> uh, well, uh, okay, so some, some of it is uh, obvious to me, but maybe not obvious to you. Um, if you want to be interesting, be interested. So before reaching out to Oscar, he's not in the audience, is he? Oscar, the founder of Rockstar. I researched him and I tried to get an understanding of what is this guy like? Could be a guy, could be a girl, a lady, or whoever you want to work with. Thanks. Um, research your, uh, your audience before, before reaching out. Um, um, be bold enough to do a proposal. So, what's your name? Renzo. Renzo. Um, so, s say that we've talked for an hour or half an hour, and then uh, either in the moment or afterwards, I would follow up and say something like, um, it, 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 to me, it, it looks like you are in the desperate need of a commercial director. I could be that person. Why? These are the three reasons why. Um, if you are open to exploring that further, um, here is my 100-day plan. So I have a 100-day plan, including bullet points of what I would do in the first 100 days. Um, that worked for me, that worked for a dear friend of mine who now works at Mosa Meat. It's a, it's a really promising company from the, from the Netherlands uh, that worked for him. So I would also take the uh, uh, 100 days program uh, or plan uh, what else? Um, gosh. Maybe, maybe just more specific towards it. Um, in regards to if you want to be an entrepreneur, but still want to check out what's out there. Does that make sense? Uh, so sort of like a, a freelancer? Freelancer, freelancer, contractor, yeah. Start off as a, as a freelancer, but you kind of want to go about that afterwards. I don't know if that was well, specific. 
I, uh, what is your question? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Within Heineken. Yes. Okay. Uh, Exciting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. How to become? Yeah. You create a job within an existing company. Uh, I don't know if I. It's for a job, and uh, may maybe this is not answering your question, but if you are, uh, if you all also want to have your own company as a, on the side, you would be proposing, um, listen, managing director, this is, I propose to do this uh, in 30 hours per week, 30, 32 hours per week, because I w want, want to have my own business on the side, and then uh, let's see. Right? You can assume that uh, he or she thinks it's uh, idiotic, but uh, let's see what happens, right? And uh, my advice would also, if you are going to venture and uh, uh, create your own job, maybe not try it at the, your uh, ideal company, right? Just test a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, that's a sigh of like, oh, nice. Uh, this, is, I'm, I, it's a, this is a topic I'm really excited about. <laughs> well, I've invested a lot of time in it, so <laughs> thanks. Yeah. That was it, guys. Thank you. Yeah.